Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part two of my succulent painting. I'm painting the second layer and the fine details. If you like videos like this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. So I'm starting out with the center of the succulent and putting in some shadows I have paint on one brush and then I have a dry soft brush that I blend that out with and I use this technique throughout the whole painting and you'll see that I change my mind on the color a lot and I'll go in and wipe it out with a paper towel or I'll go over it again with another color and I do this a lot during the course of this painting. I use Photoshop to take a succulent that I found on Pixabay and I change the colors on it to match my house. So I then use the dropper tool and I find what color is in each petal and Sometimes the colors are not what you think they would be. So at first I was just painting what I thought I saw. And then I would I started using the dropper tool and I'm like, oh, that's totally different than what I thought it was. So I would go in and change it. But then I would end up liking a different color there instead of what I have on my reference. So... I changed it throughout the whole thing. I just kept going back, going over. I, if I put one color somewhere, um, I, would I would think, oh, well, that looked, that would look good, you know, up here. And so there's a couple petals there that I changed, like that one, that I went and changed several times. And then you'll see me go over the edges there with um, a fine liner. Like every time I go in and paint that, if I get close to the edge, I mess up the, the white part again and I have to go and do it again. And I'm painting them, I am using white at first so that I can have it really bright there and then I'll go back in, in, in the end with a glaze so that I can make it, you know, whatever color I want, I can tint it. So I'm putting some shadows in and adding some color that I see on the reference photo. And it has just some beautiful colors. And these match my home so well, I cannot wait to hang this up. As soon as this puppy's dry, it's going straight on my wall. I know exactly where it's going. And I am, am trying out Galkid by Gamblin to thin out my paints. I normally use Winsor & Newton Liquid Original, so I have never used Galkid before. It's a little different. I thinned it down a, a little bit with paint thinner because it's awfully thick. Um, but you have to, when you're using oils, if you use Galkid, you have to do the fat over lean which means that the first layer is not going to have as much oil in it. And then as you, like the second layer, you can put more oil. And then if you do another layer, you can add even more oil. So that way the fat over lean, it won't crack. If you do it, if you have um, a lean layer over a fat layer, it could crack. So the more, the more layers you put, the less paint thinner you will put in your gal kit. And 
and the colors that I'm using um, I had to order a couple colors I could not get phthalo turquoise and it's probably because I didn't have phthalo green but I tried using viridian and phthalo blue and I just could not get the vibrancy that I wanted so I ended up ordering some Winsor & Newton Thalo Turquoise and it's really beautiful. I love it. So I used it a lot in the painting. And then I got some Gamblin Radiant Turquoise, which really I could mix that. But it just seemed like I couldn't get that color as bright as I wanted it. And what I ended up figuring out is if I really thin down the phthalo turquoise if I added a lot of gam a, a lot of galcad to it um, on the final layer I could get it some I could get the colors the turquoise like a really bright turquoise like I could see in the reference photo if that makes sense So I got a lot of comments on this when I posted it on Facebook on my first layer saying how good it looked, that it looked finished, but I don't think that, um, it, I don't think that you guys could see, well, I know you couldn't see it close up, close up, it did not look as, as good. And I know that you guys can probably see that now just looking close up at the petals that I haven't worked on the second layer, that they're pretty rough looking. But from a distance, it looked good. I didn't want this to be super realistic. I ended up putting more detail in it than I thought I was going to. But I really, I'm in love with it. This is the first time in a while that I've done a painting that I knew I was going to hang on my wall. So I'm deepening the shadows and this is where I'm putting some phthalo turquoise with a little bit of black and I normally don't use black but I needed it to to get really deep and so I decided to use the black. And then I'm going back in and putting that white um, edge back on with my liner and I'm going to do that every time I go in and put more color close to the edge because I mess it up and I do not have a steady hand and I'm kind of a sloppy painter, so I have to go back in and, and fix what I've messed up. And that's the nice thing with oil is you can always go back in and fix what you've what you've messed up. I've been painting a lot of succulents lately. This is my first one in oil. The others have been in watercolor. And I, I don't normally paint plants. It's just been in the past couple of years that I've been painting them. Normally before that I was just stuck on portraits. That's all I wanted to paint were portraits. And I kind of got burnt out. The petal I'm painting right now is probably my favorite one. I think this one turned out the best. It's got like the, the petal that's down in it that's about to come out. And so it gives it so much depth.
Oh my gosh. So, uh, okay, it's not a funny story. Maybe it's a little funny now, but it was not funny. I had my frog painting on a tabletop easel and my, my art room was so messy that I like kind of, I was trying to move my other easel out of the way and I knocked that one down and it's metal. So when my frog fell, apparently the easel hit the back of it and poked a hole right in my canvas. And I was so pissed off. I could not believe that that happened. I was so angry. Um, I guess it's kind of funny now. I guess I can fix it. Obviously I can't sell it. I wasn't planning on hanging it because it doesn't match anything in my home. So I guess it's just gonna sit down here in my studio. But luckily I got a picture of it before it fell and got the hole in it. So I'm, I've got it on Redbubble and I have it on my, Etsy, I have it in my Etsy shop. I was thinking of painting another succulent after this, but I'm wondering like, are you guys sick of them? If you're, if you're tired of them, let me know and I will move on to something else. But I really do think they're beautiful and they're, they're a lot of fun to paint. I wanted to paint more just to hang in my home. But I won't film them if you guys are tired of them. I think my next project is going to be soft pastels. They're so messy, but they turn out really good. And they're so quick and easy. And you can use cheap pastels and they still look good. If you have a set of cheap pastels, it doesn't matter. I would paint with them to anyway. I mean, I have a set. I have more expensive ones and then I have really cheap ones and I use them all. So I finally got on the bandwagon and got one of those carts, like those Ikea carts that it seems like every artist has in their videos. and But mine came from Michael's and I just love it. I don't know why I didn't get one before. They have like three baskets on it. I've got my paints in it. It's real light and so I can move it wherever I need it to and I don't have to have my paints and my brushes all over my table next to my palette where they get messy. So I should have bought this a long time ago. They had them on sale at Michael's for 30 bucks. So I got a white one because I really didn't like the mint one. The mint one was the closest to the color that I wanted, but I really wanted it to be turquoise. So I bought the white and I think I'm going to paint it. But right now I'm using it anyway. So I really love it. I should have bought it a long time ago. So I'm putting the darks in and the lights in and blending them together and that's what I do um, throughout this whole thing. I'm just trying to get my darks dark enough and my lights light enough and sometimes I felt like I didn't want to go as dark as I did but I'm glad that I did. It gave it a lot of contrast and made it look a lot more realistic. It can look realistic and not have the colors that, you know, that are supposed to be there. As long as they are light, if they're, you know, the right shade, then it will still look realistic. So I could have made this purple or pink, and as long as I had the darks, if I had the contrast right, the darks dark enough, the lights light enough, then 
it would still look realistic. It doesn't matter what color. So I discovered something on YouTube about cleaning your brushes that you oil paint with. Um, I already use the, oh, I don't have the brand of it with me, but it's, it's something I bought from Michael's. It's like a tub of paint brush cleaner. It's like hard. I can't remember the name of it, but I'll link it down in the description. So it, it cleans your brushes. So I, first I use like Dawn dish soap and I clean them out as best I can. And sometimes, I mean, they've got a ton of paint on them and sometimes I, I wait a little too long to dry it to, sometimes I wait a little too long to clean them and then the paint like starts to dry a little bit in them. And especially if you're using Liquin or Gal Kid, they're going to dry even quicker. So I use Dawn dish soap first, and then I use that the brush cleaner. And I've got, the one is called Pink Soap, it's a liquid. And then the other one, I can't remember the name, but um, it's in a tub. And I, I clean them with that, but sometimes I still cannot get all the paint out. And if it's down like in the ferrule or close to it, it kind of it spreads your bristles out and ruins your brushes. I mean, you can still find other uses for the brushes, but I want them back to how they were um, when I bought them, usually. So I found this video on YouTube. If you use oil, and I ended up using baby oil, um, and just keep rubbing your brush through it, like in a bowl, and then you just wipe it out, do it again, wipe it out. Um, I mean, it took me a couple of hours to get all my brushes clean, but I got them all clean. I got them, I got brushes back to their original state that I never thought I could get back. And you cannot keep that baby oil in it. You've got to clean that out. Then I used my Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner and, you know, cleaned all that oil out with that because baby oil does not dry ever. So you cannot leave that in your brush, but that's what I used. Um, I didn't want to use one of my good oils. You can just go get some baby oil for a dollar at Dollar Tree. So that's my little tip. I, I hope that it's okay to do that. I mean, I just saw it on YouTube and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this. And so I did. I also have used Murphy's oil, what's it, what's it called, Murphy's oil soap, and that works good too. But I'm telling you, the, the oil gets out oil. So the baby oil just, and it smells good, got my oil paint out. I mean, it, it worked. So. I don't know if you can hear the wind in this in my through my mic but it is so windy out I looked outside on my cushions to my chairs on my front porch were like all out in my grass flying around I had to go out and bring them in it's been so warm here in Ohio waiting for it to snow but it hasn't and I'm down in Cincinnati I know that other parts of Ohio no up north it has snowed but it hasn't hasn't snowed anything significant here yet
The second layer to this took me a lot longer than the first. I'm kind of a perfectionist and so I kept going in and trying to get it perfect but after a while I was like you know what it looked pretty even with just the first layer from a distance so I knew that I didn't have to put too much detail in it to make it look nice. It's a large painting so when you back up and look at it it looks a lot better than it does up close. But now I've made it, if you look at it up close, it looks a lot better now. And see here my technique, I put the colors down that I saw and then I blended them together. Because in the photo that I was using, it was very blended, the petals are very blended, so I was trying to blend them as best that I could and oils blend so nice they're so easy what drew me to oils in the first place was that they dried really slow and I love that about them my first paint that I used was acrylics when I was in college and it dried so fast, that's what I hated about it. Back then I could blend it, but the paint would start drying too quick on my palette. And I just, I did not enjoy it as much. So as soon as I was introduced to oils um, and I just saw how long they lasted on my palette. Um, they didn't dry out and you didn't need as much to put down. Um, I just fell in love. Now towards the end, I thought I was filming and apparently I wasn't so there's a lot in the end that is not filmed
So I just had to pause this and go upstairs because my daughter was freaking out because of the wind. It is blowing like really hard. So I let my, my lab out front. She is almost 10 years old. She'll be 10 on my birthday, which is January 31st. So she'll be 10, I'll be 45, oh my goodness. And she has arthritis in her legs. So I have to let her out front because in our back, she has to go down steps to get down to the yard. And it's she'll go down, but then doesn't wanna come back up. And so I just started taking her out front to go instead. And she was in and out quick because she didn't wanna be out in that wind. And then my little wiener dog, I, I just held him out front because he'll run, he'll run off. Um, but he wants to be out there too. So I just took him out and held him and he was just shaking all over. And so I let him out back, but he was real quick too. So I'm getting down to the end here. Um, this is where my, my footage mysteriously disappeared. I, I guess I did not hit record. I don't know what happened, but I'm sorry about that. But I did end up glazing over the white edges and putting um, just more detail around them so it wasn't such a stark difference from the, the white around the edge and then, you know, the, the color on the leaf or on the petal itself. So ended up looking a little more realistic. So we're almost to the end now. This is the last petal that you'll see me paint. Um, because I messed up and didn't hit record on my phone. So here is the end result. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.